Hi, Revere, and welcome to our Revere Veterans and Community Show. Today we have two special guests, two athletes, if I may say. One is Mr. David Valdez, a three-year veteran of the L.A. Dodgers and a three-year veteran of the Seattle Mariners. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you for coming on the show. And then we have a future All-Star ball player. His name is Jack Wallace. He's three years with the New England Defenders, plays third base, and I believe you're 15 years old. Yep. By the time we get through here, you look like 90. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for coming on the show, Jack. Before we start, I want to start with Dave here. Dave, tell us how you first got started in baseball. Well, that was a long time ago, 1992. I started my baseball career, and I get drafted by the Seattle Mariners with David Ortiz and all those guys. We played together. You played with David Ortiz? The yes. Big Pappy. We were the Big Pappy. We played together. Me as a third base, he as a first base. Right. That was 1992. Then we played together for three years in Seattle. Then I moved to the L.A. Dodgers, and I played over there with Adrian Beltre and all those guys, too. That's good, because I want to talk to you about the Dodgers, because I come from Brooklyn when they were called the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> but before we get there, Jack, tell us a little bit. You're only 15 years old, so... I don't know how much you can tell us, but tell us a little about yourself, how you first got involved with the Baseball Academy. I believe you are the uh, founder of the baseball. Yes, I am. Okay. Tell us about that. When I was um, eight years old, I, I started to really like baseball when I turned like eight. And my friend in Winthrop would go to Dave's and I would join him once in a while going to the academy. And then after a long, like two years, I started going regularly. And what did they teach you at the academy? Because that's good for all young kids. He taught me how to, how to play baseball and also how to be a good person in the game of baseball and out of baseball. Right. Now, you brought a bat and glove. You got it with you? Yeah, that's right. Show the kids, the prop, without hitting me, because I know <laughs> the <laughs> Show the kids the good position, how it would be like to. Should I do it? Yep. Show the kids what it's like to. I want to hold it like. Right. I hold it like a little lower, but. Yep. And that's where you learn at the academy, right? Yep. Yep. And what's your batting average, if I may say so? I don't, I don't know what it is. About 330? Probably. Okay, that's close enough. 800. A little better than that. Okay, we'll give you a 340. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Show us how. Don't bump the hill. <laughs> well, the biggest thing he works on is when you're hitting, you want to pivot your back foot and then oh. come into the straight until the bat hits the ball and you're watching the bat hit the ball and then finish like that and then run to first oh okay <laughs> by the way I, I gotta tell you a little can i use that bat to tell you a little joke absolutely yeah, sure. i was down in Revere beach which i mentioned to you walking my dog i got this german shepherd dog and he was walking down the beach with me and this little kid came over to pet him well the dog grabbed the hole of the kid oh. and he wouldn't let go Thank God I had you with me, Jack, because you loaned me the bat, and I had to kill him. Oh, <laughs> yep. And you the killed, reason, oh, cool. yeah. And the reason I killed him, Dave, so he wouldn't tell his mother <laughs> it was the kid I killed. There you go. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you for the loan of the bat. <laughs> I thought you liked that little joke, Dave. I want you to start. Where did you grow up? In what town? At the, I mean, your early youth to begin with. Well, I grew up in Dominican Republic. Yep. You know, we play baseball 24-7 over there. We live and die playing baseball. My mother and my father had to chase me to get me inside the house because I didn't want to go home. You know, it's daylight out. We're going to be playing baseball all day long. Then that's how we came here, through baseball. To and how did you get picked up, I mean, to go to practice with Seattle or the Dodgers by the scouts? I mean, where did they find you? Uh, I was um, at the school. And oh, just like you have now. Just let this it's exactly. And the guy invited me to one of the practice. They have a game against the Detroit Tigers that day, the minor league Detroit yep. Tigers. And they gave me one at bat. And believe it or not, I hit a grand slam to walk, walk off grand slam. And they signed me right away. They dropped me right there that day. Yep. But let me tell you. They were going to draft me when I was a kid, but it wasn't a baseball, it was for the Army. <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough, too. By the way, I got to tell you, 
first of all, you do so much for the veterans. I have to thank you for that. No, no, thank you. No, thank you're you. a community, of the, a veteran community. And before we go any further, I'd like to present you. This is a flag that's given by the Revere Veterans Service, the wow. Revere Police Department. Stop and shop. They donate the flags on the city of Revere. So here's one for you as a thank little you. memento. Because this is what we do in America. We fight for this flag. This is, this is, this is a privilege. This is I know a, that. I'm very proud you gave me that one. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. That. It's a pleasure to have you up here, my Thank friend. Thank you. Thank okay. you. It's an honor. It's a real honor. By the way, besides yourself, you got any other brothers and sisters, Jack? I have a sister, an older, older sister. She, do you? Yeah. Play baseball, too? No. Okay. She, she figure skated. No, we have a reverse uh, girls softball teams. Yes. Yep. In New York, we had girls' baseball teams when I was a kid. Imagine that. Wow. Yeah. And it wasn't heard of much about little girls playing baseball, but they had them over there. Now, you play. tell us some of the great uh, moments you had playing for it. Let's start with the L.A. Dodgers. But first of all, I come from Brooklyn. They were the Brooklyn Dodgers. Yes. They moved to L.A. in 1957. I didn't know why they moved, but you explained it to me. Would you explain it to the people why they moved there? Absolutely. I like history, and, you know, I like the history of the team that I play for. So when the city denied the land for, for the new stadium, uh, Peter Mali, they offered a, a tax-free and free land in L.A., so he moved the team over there. That's for the reason, because it was free. Right. We had a baseball pitcher on the Brooklyn Dodgers. Uh, maybe you heard of him called Freddie Fitzsimmons. Yes. The, yep. And he had a, a bar down the street. Now, at that time, the baseball players weren't making the salary that they make today. He was making 10000 a year playing for the Dodgers. That wow. was his salary. So he to uh, supplement his income, he had a bar down the street. But then all of a sudden, the salaries now went up to what? Some of them are getting oh, like yeah. 20 million. million. It's How much? 20, 33 million. 25 million no, for one year? For yeah. one year, 33. A-Rod. A A-Rod's -Rod. the highest contract. Like you mean hey, Rod Rodriguez? Yep. Jeepers, maybe it's not too late for me to take up baseball. <laughs> <laughs> you help me lift the bat up. I don't shoulder. blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> so you played three years, three years, that's a total of six years. So how many years altogether then? I played 12 years because then I play Winter League, I play independent baseball, I play in St. Louis, and I play in Pickfield for the Black Bear. Oh, did you? Yes. I got to tell you, um, we don't have relations with Cuba, when I say relations, diplomatic relations. But some of the very good ball players also come out of Cuba. Mm -hmm. They come out of uh, Costa, uh, Puerto Rico. Colombia. Colombia and El Salvador. Panama. Yeah, so th that's good. Now I want to get back to you. I want you, to, you're in high school now, you were a sophomore. Mm -hmm. After you graduate, because uh, you've got to start planning your future ahead. What would you like to do? What would you like to be? Uh, I, mean, I, I know what you're going to yeah. say, but I'd rather you say it. I would want to be a base. I want to be a major league baseball player. Do you really? Yes. That's good. And you know, if you stick with it, you'll make it. Believe you Hopefully, me. Hopefully, yes. Right. Now, when I was playing baseball in school, when I was playing, I batted 400, but that was 100 for each year. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I only played four years. <laughs> so that's no good. I know that. And I you, you should meet me and could make you a good hitter. <laughs> yeah. well, I've got to tell you. But, you know, sports is a good thing for the youth of America. And you have a baseball academy. Tell us where it's located and how people could contact you. Absolutely. Uh, we are located at uh, 4000 Mystic Valley Parkway in Meckford. We got a little academy over there. Uh, we take the kids from they were seven years old all the way to 17. And we work. We train in not only as to be a baseball player, if not to be a human being, to have a sense of humor, to respect the game, respect the fans, respect your parents. And that's why we are so successful. For the last three years, we've been ending the best team in New England. Have you? Congratulations yes. again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And you too, Jack. Congratulations. Jack has been very, a very good part of that. Has successful. He? Yes. Right. By the way, so it's from seven years, that's the youngest you can go on to the yes. team? Mm -hmm. To 17? Yes. Could you make one exception? <laughs> it depends who. <laughs> Could you take an 85-year-old up there? <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> that would be good. Because I'll tell you why. Sport is good. I mean, we have a gentleman here in Revere. 
you might have heard of him, Mickey Casoli, he says no to drugs. And you know, kids do have a drug problem. They never had it when I was a kid. We didn't have that kind of problem that they have today. And I'm sure you, you, the academy does a lot to teach absolutely, the Absolutely, absolutely. You gotta get it young. You know, it's like my good friend, Jeremiah, you know, Goodwin, he's, yep, yep. he's coming for the, you know, cherry department. Yep. And he always said to me, David, uh, I need the kid younger to teach baseball and sport so they don't end it, you know, in, a, in an assistant. Right. That's, 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 that's my commitment to, to try to get the kid and teaching, you know, good manners, uh, love for sports, and far away from drugs, can, and all kind of bad things. Right. Yep. Because I'll tell you, when I was a kid, after school, and I, like I said, I come from Brooklyn, school ended, we went to start a school in the morning at 9, we went to 3.30. That was our hours at that time. And if you wanted to go to the gym after school, we have what they call gym class. You could go in there, play basketball, or Oops. play ping pong, or whatever you wanted to entertain yourself with up there. And they would do that till about 7 o'clock at night that yeah, they wow. would open. So we, that was good. It kept us off the street of doing bad Sports. things. Right. Now I got to put you on the spot. Uh -oh. now I'm gonna, how about your academic grades, Jack? Are they pretty good? Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty good. You're a history buff. I know that. I, I like, yeah, that's my favorite subject. History? Yes. Is it, uh, just he's no better than me. Is he really? No, no better than me in history. Are you really? <laughs> I got to tell you, I went to a high school. They honored the veterans on Veterans Day, Memorial Day that went by recently. And I asked a kid, do you remember Frank? Now the kid was 17 years old, so I says, you remember Franklin Delano Roosevelt? And he says, he looked at me like funny. He says, no, I don't. I says, well, he was a president of the United States. And I says, after him, there was like Truman, there was like Kennedy Eisenhower. and Eisenhower. Eisenhower. And Lyndon after Johnson. Eisenhower, Johnson. Ken Lyndon Johnson, Johnson. Kennedy. Lyndon Kennedy, right. And then there was Clinton. And Carter. I says, do you know all Carter. these presidents? And he said, no. I says, yeah. But when I was a young kid, I knew all my presidents. And you know what the kid said to me? He says, when you were a young kid, there were only four. <laughs> 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 so hey, wow, well, you got a point. <laughs> so I thought that was a good answer. So history is very good because if you learn history, you're bound not to repeat it. And that is exactly. A good that, oh, my God, unbelievable. By the way, after you graduate high school, and what high school do you go to? I went to high school. Went to high school. And what college would you like to go to? Uh, University of South Carolina. That's where my granddaughter went, believe it or not. University of South Carolina. She went there, and she got... Hit by a car there, too. <laughs> no, and she's an invalid now and for the rest of her life. You Some drunk driver knows oh. she's serious. Ran up on the sidewalk and hit her. No good. Yep. So, and what are you going to major in? I haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> probably, probably something to do with history, I would think. Or, like, maybe, like, broadcasting. Like, if baseball doesn't work out, I want to be, like, a sports announcer. That's good. So, yep. Well, like so, a, yeah, in yeah, other like words, a, get into communications. Yeah, pretty much. Like what, what you're doing here. Oh, that's good. Now, by the way, do you have a family, Dave? Yes, I do. I have a, a beautiful family. Let's hear about them. Tell us about your wife, the kids. Oh, they Don't are, be bashful now. No, no, they are, they are my life. You know, no. I live, breathe every moment of my life for my family. My, my daughter, Alana, my mother, you know, we are a very good, close family. Name the names. We want to give them credit. Absolutely. It's Alana... Uh, Alana Georgina yep. Valdez and my mother Camela Guzman, uh, my wife Kelly Downing, my brothers uh, Robert, Enrique, Thomas. We all baseball fans too. Are you really? Yes. That's and let me. Who did I root for? The family for the Red Sox. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> the Red Sox, Patriots, you know, Celtics, you name it. Oh, all, all the Boston teams. In absolutely, the they love the Boston team. <laughs> yep. When I was in New York, when the Dodgers moved to L.A. in 57, it, it was always a feud between the New York Giants and the Brooklyn Dodgers. There was like the Red Sox and the Yankees. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to root for the Giants. So I had to go to the American League team because the New York Mets were not New York at that no, time. No, no, 1974, Before, no? Right. So I rooted for the Yankees. And uh, I've been a Yankee fan all my life. I hope the people in Boston don't hold that against <laughs> me. <in there. laughs> So, well, I got you a little 
question right here. Do you know when the Giant moved to San Francisco? W what was the owner, what was the only thing that they asked the team and be able to sell it to them? Uh, I'm trying to think, but I really don't remember. Really. The colors. What was his name? The colors. Oh. The color of the uniform. That, that should be the same color as the New York Giants. Oh. That's why the, the San Francisco Giants have the same color from that time. Right, but I got to tell you, this, uh, uh, they're in Candlestick Park, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, and the Dodgers are in Chev Chev Chavez Ravine. Chavez, Chavez Ravine. Ravine. I'll get that name correct there. Because, <laughs> you know, we don't get much of the National League because we're an American League team over here. So when I watch baseball, like if the Red Sox ain't playing, they'll usually show an American League ball team like the Yankees. Or the Tigers. Baltimore. By the way, talking about Baltimore, Baltimore is doing pretty good, too. Yeah. My very good friend, Dan Duquette, he's doing a pretty good job right now, yeah. By the way, did you ever meet Cal Ripken? Uh, we haven't met in person. Oh. We've been talking because, yeah. you know, they, uh, he asked me if I want to bring my defenders to his, his national championship. I got to tell you about the Brooklyn Dodgers. I think it was 1947. The first African-American ball player was Jackie Robinson. Yes. There were two players on the Dodgers. One was, maybe you heard of him, Pee Wee Reese was mm -hmm. the, Reese short, the captain. And Pete Reese at the center fielder. Ring yeah. a bell? Yep. Pee Wee Reese was pretty good about Jackie coming on the team. Pete Reese wasn't so good. And Branch Rickey, I believe, was the yeah, owner right, of the yep. Dodgers at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he called them into their office. And he said to them, any problems? Talking to both Pee Wee Reese and Pee Wee Reese. Any problems that you're going to have with Jackie Robinson, Jackie Robinson will be here, but you won't. And that, that quieted him right down there. So wow. it was Branch Rickey that really did that. And after that, we got some great. The one I liked was Willie Mays of the New York Giants. Absolutely. There yeah. was a terrific ball player. Well, my favorite black player from that time is Satchel Page. He's yep. my hero. Oh. Too bad he could yeah, never, never break into the majors at a young age. He I was know, with the Negro League. Not in yeah. his prime. Yeah, yeah. not in his prime, but he did pretty good, too. He did pretty good as a 48-year-old. Right. And by the way, since you're a history buff, help me on this one. Now, people have asked me to ask a question. Now, nobody remembers it. There used to be a one-handed pitcher that came out of the Second World War. He, he would throw the ball, put the glove under his arm, and he only had one arm, and I'm trying to think. Do you remember? Well, I, I remember the, the last one, uh, Jim Abbott. Yeah, Jim Abbott. I don't remember the first one. I know there was a hitter for the Cardinals yeah, the in the hitter. minor league that was one handed. I didn't know that either. His name was, like Pete, his name was Pete Gray. Oh, he yes. Was, he about. was a one handed hitter in like the yeah. minor leagues, but never yeah, made the majors. Right. So I've never heard of the pitcher. But Jim Abbott was the, f the last one that I remember. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, let me ask you uh, the people that play in the minor leagues, this. Uh, Tell me something about the different types of minors. Like, what they mean by Class A, Class B, Triple A, Triple B. What do they really mean by that? They well, uh, rookie league is when you get just drafted. They take you from high school, or they pick you in college draft, or they sign you as a free agent. They put you in the rookie ball because this would you, that's going to be your first step. And then they they if you do good, you move to single A. That's a little better baseball. You don't play that many games during the... Is there a difference between salary, let's say, between... Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not talking majors now. I'm talking, let's say, like the Montreal, Brooklyn Dodgers yeah. farm team. The Down Montreal lower Royals. than that. Is there quite a difference in salaries between the lower, like, let's say, triple A and minor league? All the way to, to double A, you only make like $1,000 a month. A month? Yes. Yeah. And you got to pay for everything. So at the end of the season, you, you pay less when you play minor league. It's oh. no money in ball. Oh, so like the Red Sox farm team, like Pawtucket, they only get it. No, Pawtucket, Triple you A's play team. for contract now. Oh. Double A and under, you they pay your salary. Oh, so I you see. make like a thousand, twelve hundred dollars. And month. you got to pay your own expenses. You got to pay your rent. You got to pay your own spend, or move to a host family. And if you're in the major leagues, if I can ask you that, like when you travel out, let's say you, uh, L.A. Dodgers, and you're coming to play the Giants. In New York, let's say that they were there, not San Francisco, in New York. Do they pay for your hotel and your travel, or you got to do that yourself? They, they will pay for everything. Well, as Even your meals? When you make it to the major league, you are all set. They pay you for the meal, they pay for the flight, they pay for the hotel. Well, the host team pay for everything. I, right. And, you know, when we used to go to the bleachers at Ebbets Field, guess how much the tickets was at that time? Ten cents? A dollar. 
No, a dollar we had to grandstand seats. Yeah. <laughs> 50 cents? 10 cents a month. <laughs> Excuse me. I think it was 15 or 20 cents at that time. Wow. Yep. Well, that would be great now. Yep. Postage was two cents a stamp. Yeah. Yep. I'm talking about my age, not your <laughs> age. Okay, when you, grew, when you grew up, things were a little bit more expensive. But they were a lot, a little, even though they were more expensive, they were better, though. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like when I was, we didn't have television. Uh, television first came out around 45, 46 at the beginning. We had a little round screen. Not Black we. And white. My, my neighbor used to have that. So we kids would sneak up on, at night. Through the window. Uh, uh, through the window. And he would get teed off at us and he would yell at us to get the hell out of his yard. Or get, mm -hmm. What we wanted to do was to watch the TV mm -hmm. in there. And those days, the mailman, uh, the mailman, the milkman mm -hmm. would come on a horse and buggy. He dropped wow. the milk off in the morning and leave it at your door. You open up the door and the milk was there. Wow. Today, no, nope. no, nope. you, you have to buy it yourself. Uh, yeah, today I don't think if they left something in front of your door, Steal by it. the time that he went away, the milk would go That's away true. too. That's true, <laughs> right? It's a That's, shame. It's a I know shame. that. I know that. Some times have changed. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me one other thing. You haven't decided what you want to do yet. You accept to go into communications. Did you ever step to think? to take up like a, a technical course, like an engineering course or a... I haven't really thought about like that yet, but it wouldn't be that bad a thing because I like to see, I like to build things and it doesn't seem like that bad of a thing. You like to do construction? A little, yeah. That's good. I used to be a draftsman when I was working, you know. We didn't have com computers like you have today. You can plug every, uh, by the way, I don't, I don't know anything about computers. I'm mm. about a dummy dummy when it comes to computers. But I'm sure you do. And how did you learn, if I may ask you, when you first started with them? Because I don't know how to work. They actually, they actually taught us in school. When I was like in elementary school, we had a computer class. At what year did you first start with a computer? If I'm just out of nosiness. When I was like six. Six, they taught you at the beginning. At six? Yeah, that six would years. put you about the first or second grade. <laughs> yeah. First grade, we had a computer class in second grade and all the way up through high school. I got to tell you, when I went to school, I looked at my report card one time. And I looked there, and there was a big F there. <laughs> so I got a little man. I went up to the teacher, and I said, teacher, why did you give me an F? She said, Marvis, that's the lowest mark I could give you. <laughs> <laughs> he can go any lower. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was for English, by the way. Oh. That was my, believe it or not, that was my worst subject in school was English. As the people could tell the way I talked. <laughs> 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 it's been good. By the way, what would you like to see for the future for the kids at your academy? Because that's what we want. Oh, before we talk about your academy, you do a lot for the Army veterans, and we forgot to mention that. You are a real community veteran, and you will be a real community veteran. Tell us about the Army things you do, because we'd love to hear about that. Absolutely. My good friend, uh, Lieutenant Avery, he approached me with a white, red, and blue tour. Uh, if, you, if you remember, in 1980, Mr. George Bush Sr. was the one who introduced that, hey, we want baseball for the, for the military too. Right. So we started with a tour in 1980. In the last 10 years, I've been training the Army. I've been going to the, to the games. We've been playing tournaments. We go everywhere around the world. And we show that the Army is not all about war. We can do baseball, too. Tell us some of the trips you took around the world. Let us have it. Oh, my God. Uh, Don't be bashful. Oh. Nah. <laughs> Dominican Republic, <laughs> Panama, Nicaragua, uh, here in the United States, all over the states. Europe, too? Yes. And uh, Africa? Oh, no, no. Ha we haven't been to, to Europe, I don't remember. Maybe they, they go. I only go with them in the summertime. In the Middle East? Maybe, I don't, I guess, I guess so, but I'm not sure about oh, that. okay. They've been going over there to play baseball. There's no baseball over there. There isn't? No. No, I've been to the Middle East, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I think you like, I used to work in Michigan. And by the way, Michigan had the Detroit Tigers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good baseball team, Al K line Cabrera. at the time. Yeah. Yep. I remember them. There was a first baseman with the beard. I'm trying to think of his name. They traded him just Norm recently. Cash? No, no, oh, no, no, no. This year? Uh, uh, Prince Fielder. Prince Fielder. Prince Fielder, right. Who's he playing for now? The, he's, Texas. He's hurt. He's out for the season now. Oh, he is? Yeah. He's out for the season. That's good to know. By the way, we got about, like I say, three minutes. 
take a minute, say whatever you want, and what you'd like to see baseball do for you, or what you can do for baseball, or any sport. I like uh, baseball has been pretty much the thing in my life for most of my life, and I want to succeed in it and keep going and have a good life in baseball. That's good. It's all because of him. He's pretty much taught me everything I know about baseball. Right. By the way, I, I got to tell you, I've seen a lot of kids, but this is one of the great ones that you brought up. Uh, you told me the, to bring the best. I and before, I, that's what I said. But before we start, I want your autograph right here. Oh, uh, I, I, I want yours. Okay, you can have mine. <laughs> uh, by the way, you can call me by my first name. What's your first name? Morris. <laughs> See that? By the way, I got to tell you, I had a postcard. My son-in-law took it. We went to a Yankee game back in the, let's see, I was about six or seven. Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth. Wow. Two toodles mm -hmm. on a picture, on a postcard, and we bought the card, and they autographed it. They signed wow. it, Lou wow. Gehrig and Babe Ruth. But my son-in-law got a hold of it, so he's got it now on there. By the way, thank you for your autograph. What would you like to see in the future? Well, my vision for the future is, you know, to help the countries, to help the little kid to improve, to get more knowledge about history, about you know how to be a very good citizen so we, ha we are safe, our community is safe, we don't have to have all this can and all this drug problem uh, through baseball or through academically. That's my, that's my vision for the future. If I can help and I can you know, mentor any other younger generation, I would be more than happy to do it. Right. I would like to say one thing to you, Dave, and I would like to speak to the people of Revere and the communities. If you have any young grandkids or any young kids that would love to go into sports, have them contact Mr. Valdez, and you tell them exactly one more time how they can contact you, Dave. They can contact me. Uh, my phone number is 781-856-8721, valdezacademy.com, or they can come to my academy at 4000 Misty Valley Parkway and Meg from Massachusetts. Right, thank you. And by thank the way, you. Jack, I want to thank you for coming on the show. God bless you, and I hope you have a great future. Thank I mean, you. I'd be around to see it. But you, you will, you, you will, will, you will. But you if will. I'm not, remember it. Thank you. Thank and you, you so too, much. Dave. I want to thank, thank you for you. taking the time. No, and it's thank an you for the flat. Thank oh, you so much. Oh, it's an honor for me to have you come That's on and give you on here. Thank and you. So God bless both of you. God bless the city of Revere. God bless our troops all over the world. But most of all, God bless our great country, the United States of America. And thank you both for coming. And it was an honor and a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Until the next time, I hope we have as great a guest as we had today. Thank you again. Thank you so thank much. You. And I salute you both. Thank you.